Good evening, friends. Good to see you tonight as we gather here in sanctuary for our Ash Wednesday service. I extend also a greeting to those who are joining us uh, from their homes this evening on either Facebook or YouTube. Uh, it's good to be gathered as we begin this uh, special 40 days leading to uh, Holy Week, the events of Holy Week, and of course the celebration of Easter. As we gather this evening, um, due to the pandemic, we're doing things a little bit differently for the imposition of ashes. I hope you uh, were all able to grab a, a bag of ashes on your way in. If you didn't, they're right in the back by the uh, entrance to the sanctuary, and you can pick up a, a bag of the ashes. I will prompt you when the time comes, and I would ask that um, in giving uh, ashes to yourself, uh, that you just carefully open the bag and uh, use your thumb and make the sign of the cross on your forehead, either your forehead or on your uh, hand as you are comfortable in doing. And then if you would, please make sure you seal the bag back up <laughs> and uh, we will continue the service uh, after that, after the imposition of the ashes. Let's take a moment as we begin our service now and let us recognize God's presence in our midst as we light our candles this evening. Let us pray. God, as these candles represent the light of Christ burning brightly in our lives. We light them on this night as we begin these 40 days of reflection, these 40 days of penitence, this journey with Jesus to the cross and beyond to the day of resurrection. We pray that our time together tonight would light that path for us as we seek to grow closer in faith throughout this time of Lent. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able for the opening call to worship as it is printed in our bulletin this evening. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. I invite you to remain standing as uh, Donna will be playing and singing for us, Lord, who throughout these 40 days, I invite you, if you would like to, to perhaps sing quietly in your Mass or even hum along as you would like to.
invite you to be seated, please. If you would join with me responsively in the call to prayer, followed by, together, the prayer of Lent. Friends, the Lord be with you. Let us pray this prayer of Lent together. Gracious God, we acknowledge and confess now with public words the sin and iniquity that we feel most profoundly in the privacy of our spirits and that we feel powerless to overcome. We have made valiant attempts to change our ways, but often simply to appear religious or righteous to those around us. Forgive us, we pray, and enable us to repent in the privacy of our inner selves with sincerity and singleness of heart. Then restore and reconcile us to you by the power of your Holy Spirit and your grace in the Christ in whose name we pray. Amen. I invite you to take a few brief moments in quiet prayer, perhaps uh, reflecting on your lives, reflecting on your need for God's grace and God's love in your lives. And as we journey through this time of Lent, the need that we all have, we all have for the salvation offered to us by Christ. Let us be in a time of quiet prayer. Friends, when we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, cleansing us from all unrighteousness. God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. I invite us to continue in a, a time of prayer as I offer uh, some words this evening in prayer on this Ash Wednesday. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving God, as we have come together on this night, this Ash Wednesday, we see the ashes as a symbol of our mortality. We see them as a, a symbol of our faultiness, a symbol of our sins. And they remind us, O oh God, of our need for your grace, our need for your love active in our lives. We pray this night that you would guide us through this time of Lent as we seek to follow in the path that you have laid out for us. We seek to be better persons of faith as we make this journey so that we can fully accept your grace through the time of Holy Week, through the cross and beyond to that day of resurrection on Easter. On this night, O oh God, we are thinking of those who are in some need, those who are fighting illnesses tonight, those who find themselves hospitalized and facing surgery or perhaps recovering from surgery, those who are challenged by the loss of employment through this pandemic those who are experiencing problems with children, family members, those who are going through times of broken relationships that are in need of healing. We pray for those who are hungry tonight, those who don't have proper shelter. We pray for a world that is in need of your peace. Be with us tonight move our hearts to compassion and allow us, God, to receive these ashes and that they may mark for us a holy Lent. All this we pray in the strong and in the healing name of Jesus who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this evening is taken from Matthew's Gospel in the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 6, and then verses 16 through 21. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who sees in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Since our reading from the scriptures this evening. May we hear these words with new ears tonight. May they bring fresh meaning to our, our spirits and our life of faith. I told a story in our newsletter, The Messenger, it was either last year or the year before, but I never used it in the sermon, so I figured I would, I would use it tonight to get us uh, started with the message. And it came from a colleague of mine who told me this years ago about a youth minister that had served in one of his former churches, and on the first Sunday in Lent, one particular year, this, this youth minister, he was trying his best to explain to a group of, of little kids something about the meaning of Lent, which is not an easy thing to have to do. And, and so what he decided to do was try to find some humor in the name Lent itself, which, you know, under normal circumstances probably isn't a, a bad approach, he must have been uh, doing his laundry all week in preparation for this message to the children because the first thing he did was he pulled out of this big plastic bag 
that stuff that accumulates in your dryer. And what is that stuff called? Lint, right, lint. So you thought it would be a, a good idea to pass out some of this lint to the children as he was talking about how lint sounds a lot like Lent. But that Lent was actually the beginning of this new season in the church that would end in six weeks on Easter Sunday. So he passed out clumps of lint to these little kids. Not a good idea at all. Not a good idea. The children were so incredibly bored by his lecture on the meaning of Lent, they started getting creative with the lint that had been passed out to them. And there was little Jimmy in the corner, and he took his allotted clump and he began to kind of smush it in the hair of his older sister sitting next to him. And Sally, who was a, a fashion conscious first grader, she took her lint and broke it apart in little pieces so that she could decorate the brand new dress that, that her mother had bought for her just for that day. And then there was poor little Jason who was sitting up front. Turns out that he was uh, allergic to the stuff to the point that he began sneezing. And according to his mother, after the service, he didn't stop sneezing until Easter. Take it from someone who knows, some ideas for children's sermons go much better than others. That's one that didn't go too well. So for tonight, I'd like to just spend a few minutes not talking about Lent, of course, but talking about Lent and how this season in the life of the congregation, in the life of the church, is an important one for us to mark off as we do and to journey through as we prepare ourselves and we get to the day of resurrection, that is Easter Sunday. That may seem like a long way off, but you know how time goes. You'll be here before you know it. It's been my experience over the years that Lent usually generates two responses from, from church people. There's a group that really doesn't pay too much attention to Lent because it seems to be this sort of mysterious invention of the church and doesn't have a whole lot of meaning for them. And you might even hear in some circles that, you know, quote unquote, it's a little too Catholic for us or too high church, and so it's something to be avoided. But then there's another group I found that really does embrace Lent, but they see it as this, this burden that they have to endure and that they have to give up something. We've all heard that, right? We need to give up something for Lent, almost as a punishment so that they can prove themselves worthy when, when Easter finally does arrive in, in six weeks' time. I would like to suggest to us on this evening that there is a third way that we can approach this season. And I'm, I would hope that this third way just might be a more Methodist approach to things. A Methodist approach to Lent that, that it kind of strikes a middle road for us, a middle path. So instead of going through the motions of Lent as an ordeal that we have to endure as something that we might sort of dismiss out of hand because we really don't understand it, I would hope that we might have open minds to approach these next 40 days and that we might even see this time as an opportunity for us. Each one of us has an opportunity to dig a little deeper, to strip away the veneer, that many of us live with and to dig deeper in our faith and maybe even get a little more in tune with our own journeys. Now, part of that process involves understanding our brokenness. We all have brokenness as human beings. And that's something maybe we don't like to think about too much. But if Lent does nothing else, it should at least create some space where we can intentionally be reminded that apart from God, we're no different from the rest of creation. Our bodies are, are made up of, of the stuff of the universe, atoms and molecules and particles that are imperfect in the way that they come together to form who we are. And so we hear in the ancient liturgy of the church, when it says this, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. That language is actually very intentional, and it's meant to wake us up from the other 325 days of the year when we can practice avoidance for the most part when it comes to our own mortality. As I said, these are things we don't like to always think about. 
and it forces us to, to open our eyes to the fact that we need a little bit of intervention from God if we're to be restored to the position that we were created to be. Created beings that, as it says in the psalm, a little lower than the angels. Because as we all know, I think at some level, we just can't get there ourselves. We fall short. We stumble. We make mistakes. And so we need help. And we call that grace. Grace. And I'm afraid that without it, we find ourselves lost and, and just constantly searching in this direction and that direction for meaning in our lives and for relevance in our lives. And so maybe that's why Ash Wednesday, just like Lent itself, is, is, is something like an accident that you might see on the side of the road if you're driving on the highway. It should slow you down a bit, for sure. And it should cause you to pay attention to what's going on around you. I've heard one theologian call it spiritual rubbernecking. Something that will, will get your foot off the accelerator, even for just a brief period of time, so that your life maybe doesn't whiz on by too fast. I know a lot of people who just don't like to slow down like that. It can be a, a, a painful exercise to take stock of your life and to come face to face with your own brokenness. And, and that's what Lent is meant to do. It's meant to break you down a bit. It's meant to be a little shock to the system. And that's so that God can then build you up as a beloved part of creation, as children of God. You see, the message of Lent, which focuses on our dependence on something other than ourselves, it isn't a message that's terribly popular in a culture like ours that worships self-sufficiency. We don't like to be told that we can't fix ourselves. We prefer just to keep right on going, plow on ahead, not taking the time that we need to do a little spiritual inventory in our lives. And yet, as we often hear in the Scripture, even Jesus, even Jesus needed to get off the gas every once in a while and take stock. And the way that He did that was by removing Himself from the everyday. And He did this in a very literal sense. Shutting Himself off in a room, as He says, or in a figurative sense, by practicing acts of piety, like giving alms, as it says in Matthew's Scripture, or fasting which he says we should do in secret. Now, as I said, being in that honest space of self-awareness isn't easy for us. And so, this coming Sunday, for instance, we're going to hear in, in the Scriptures about how Jesus removes Himself to the wilderness region of Judea. Actually, it says that the Spirit led him there, and it's in that deserted place that he's tempted for 40 days and 40 nights, which is a, a Hebrew way of saying it's a really long time that he spends in the wilderness doing this. But it's while he's there that he experiences what we experience. He comes to terms with what he's up against. He becomes more fully alive, in a sense, fully aware of God's guiding presence in his midst. And he comes to understand, I believe, what author Larry Crabb once wrote. And it's a quote. Brokenness is realizing God is all we have. Hope is realizing that God is all we need. Joy is realizing that God is all we want. Brokenness leading to hope. Hope leading to joy. That's the journey that we begin tonight as we take these ashes. These are visible reminders to us of what it means to be in a desert place. And we literally mark the beginning of a time of, of breaking ourselves down so that God can build us back up. Because Lent, you see, is a road that Jesus Himself traveled. 
from the desert to the cross to the empty tomb. And just like Jesus, for us, it's a road that empowers us to come to terms with what we're up against. It makes us more fully alive and and fully aware of God's guiding presence in our midst. And it opens our eyes to the ultimate truth that God is all we have. God is all we need. And God is all we want. Let us take these ashes now as a sign of those three things. God is all we have. God is all we need. God is all we want. We'll do that in just a moment. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need that we all have to renew our faith. And so I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's Word. Friends, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence. So we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Friends, I invite you now to take the bag and carefully... Open it up, if you will. I would suggest using your thumb. You don't need a lot on your thumb. And then just take a moment and mark your forehead or your hand as a sign of the cross. Hearing the words, repent and believe in the gospel. Amen. I would invite Donna to offer our next hymn of Lent, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian.
Friends, I invite you to join with me in reading responsively the reconciliation and commendation. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In this season of Lent and always, let us commend our whole lives to Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn, which Donna will sing for us, is Have Thine Own Way. Lord, I invite you to stand for this final part of our tonight's service. Now, friends, may you go forward from this night's worship and may you experience a holy Lent. May you use these 40 days as a time of reflection, a time marked off to look deep within yourselves and see those places where God's healing is needed most. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you on this day and remain with you always. And all God's beloved children said, Amen.